Hello and welcome to Glorious Ventures. My name's Jolyon and in today's video we've got another Sunday preview for you. It's 29th of October 2023. While I'm getting warmed up do make sure that you've liked, subscribed and indeed hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss the next videos. Without further ado, let's just get stuck into it. The squats of Jardlin seek aid in the Underhive. Bar a few frights on Halloween this week, we're sailing smoothly into November with a pair of famous faces from the recent Ruins of Jardlin supplement for Necromunda. Let's have a quick look at what's in store. Orin Grimjarl, last charter lord of Jardlin. As one of the last surviving squats of Jardlin, Orin Grimjarl should have taken on Oath of a Vengeance to hunt the perpetrators until his dying breath. But this outcast engineer is far from a traditionalist. His goal is nothing less than the restoration of his fallen home, and with his frightening powerful fractal pulse beamer in hand, he'll gladly accept the aid of any Imperial House aligned gang. He comes in Forge World resin. He's also got this little strange little I don't know what this is. It's a thing on it's a thing on wheels. I assume with some kind of extra weaponry, etc. And look at that chunky gun. It's almost as tall as he is. In fact, it's very close to as tall as he is. Anyway, so along with him, we're also getting Urson Grimjarl, Jardlin Nomad Hunter. Orin's older brother Urson has been a far-ranging bounty hunter since long before Jardlin fell, and the demise of his home did a little to lift the ornery squat's mood. His hunting and tracking skills are without peer, and many an ash-waste nomad has fallen prey to the massive long-shot hunting rifle he lugs around. He comes in Forge World Resin. Well, that's good. Uh, I do like this one actually like i'm um, generally a lot of the sort of squats uh iron iron head squats prospectors i'm not entirely sort of i don't hate them but i'm not sort of really enamored with them this one however i kind of dig i don't know if it's because the massive sniper rifle kind of thing he's got going on it's ridiculous but he does look pretty cool i could see myself getting this miniature at some point the paint up is a fun little project but uh i don't know if i would may maybe i could sort of see about a getting him into one of my gangs as a bounty hunter at some point but who knows and then we got some horus heresy looking stuff ah he's being released is he so geared up to butcher loyalist lapdogs in one-on-one -on -one combat the traitor champion console is an expert duelist armored with a paragon blade and volkite serpenta this resin miniature is decked out in unique mark three artificer armor with a and a flowing cape that sets him apart from the rest he also comes with a choice of two heads, bear or helmed. Okay, so obviously the cape, as I as I always like. I like my champions to have a cape for most of the time. A cape or a cloak or something something flowy. <laughs> flowy hair. I mean, that would work. But this guy doesn't have flowy hair at all. He has got a spike on the top of his helmet. He does have very, uh, well, it's extra sort of armored plates on his Mark III armor right here. This chest piece here. As I was saying in the plastic kits, the shoulder pads on the plastic, um, well, the plastic shoulder pads on the new Mark III armor, these extra bits are a lot less pronounced. So it's nice to see it on these ones. Extra arm pads, big choppy sword, Volkite Serpenta, lovely. And uh, every time I see Sons of Horus, this green is just sort of slowly, slowly talking in my ear. Very irritating. I think I will eventually get some at some point. We've also got White Dwarf issue 494. If you've picked up any of the recently re released Space Marine kits like the Company Heroes or Stern Guard Veterans, you may have noticed a certain lesser known chapter on the transfer sheets. The Raptors. Drat. As, <laughs> as experts in clandestine warfare, they revel in their obscurity. But in the next issue of White Dwarf, you'll have rare access inside the secretive chapter's records with the return of Index Astartes. That is an issue for me, because I was just saying in the video I've just made that I kind of like the Raptors and I do get tempted. Elsewhere, the White Dwarf Bunker invites you to join the Monsters and Machines Painting Challenge. A water-themed battle pack contains the Warhammer Age of Sigmar campaign and four warbands from Warhammer Underworlds, Nether Maze get Bladeborn rules for Warcry. Okay then. Warhammer Plus stuff, which as I've said many times, we don't really cover on this uh, video, this channel at the moment. Maybe in the future, once we get monetized, etc., I can consider that. But for now, that is a bit of an excess that I can't really afford to go with. But that's it. It's a, it's a pretty light week. Three things available in Forge World. A couple for Necromunda, one for Horus Heresy, and of course, White Dwarf Magazine. I think probably that's the one I'll get. Everything else I'll just happily ignore. 
for this week thankfully get prepared for buying those christmas box sets i have done a couple of videos on those battle forces so do check them out hopefully i'll be able to link to them top right hand corner or some, something like that and uh, that's all i've really got to say don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications do go and check out my website at gloriousminiatures.com and i'll see you in the next video thank you and goodbye